Mr. President, Ray McGovern is here to brief you. Oh, yeah. More bad news. Take it away, Ray. Good morning, Mr. President. And Ray, would you mind telling some people you run into that I'm coherent, that I, I, uh, uh, you know, I'm getting, I can't stand it, Ray. I know you got a lot of important tells to tell me, but, you know, here's uh, Kamala. I, I wish you well, you know, my legacy and all that. But no, there no press conference. She, nobody holds. And what, because she's got a Jewish husband, she can every once in a while say something negative about Netanyahu. But yeah, now he does whatever the hell he wants. We all know he holds our future in his hands. And he goes after us full more and more. Yeah, Trump is right in. Right? So what's Kamala? How come she gets away with this and I got slaughtered? I was, you know, she never told me she didn't like Netanyahu or what Israel's doing. I never heard that. And now she's she's getting the same briefings from you CIA people that I'm. What do you tell her? It looks more cheerful. And the Ukraine, that's also cheerful now. You give her a different briefing than you give me? No, Mr. President. Uh, my colleague who briefs Kamala. Uh, Vice Kamala, President. Kamala, they they trained me on this. You got to remember Kamala, and then look. Kamala, otherwise you'll sound right. like Trump. You're getting it all wrong. And then they tell you you're stupid because you can't do the grammar and her, you know. Well, she, you know what getting, I mean? Yeah, I do, Mr. President. She's getting the same information that I'll be giving you, uh, except when I give you my own opinion, I make that very explicit. With respect to what I tell people who ask me about uh, how how alert you are. I don't share anything from these briefings. They're sacrosanct. Well, what, what are you saying? That I'm not uh, alert? On occasion. You, you, on you, occasion you're, you're, you're saying I'm not alert? I'm alert. On occasion, uh, Mr. How, how many, uh, wait, you, you, like, you don't remember you were briefing Reagan. That guy was, <laughs> was sleep through the thing, right? He didn't even show up half the time. Right. Well, he he preferred to sleep in. Uh, to your yeah. credit, Mr. President, uh, you take in. these. I'm here. I'm here all the time with you. Yeah. What are you talking about? Well, you I permit myself. I, I've been I slandered. I've been slandered. You know that. Of course. of course, and I permit myself to say yeah. that in our dealings, you always have acted very professionally, just like everybody else says. So, uh, yeah. on that score, uh, let's yeah. proceed if, if if that's okay. Yeah, because guys like you, you end up writing books and everything, and. Make me look like an asshole. You know what? What is this? Okay, but you, you wouldn't go there. I, 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 I've been in government a long time, and so have you, Ray. You, what? You were the CIA twenty-seven years. That's right. Yeah. If anybody's been brainwashed by you, how come you're such a pinko? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding you. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Well, Mr. President, we have news today. Uh, uh, Vladimir Putin, President of Russia, has just spoken on the. Uh, Ukrainian incursion into Kursk province of Russia and uh, on the attack on the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant uh, that the Russians seized four days after they invaded uh, Ukraine. Uh, what Putin says is pretty, pretty tough. And what I want to do is just read from you a little bit, read to you for a little bit for because it's not really yet in the press. I doubt whether you've been told about it yet. This is today. He's saying, look, uh, the enemy, Ukraine, uh, with the help of U.S. or Western masters, is striving apparently to improve its negotiating position for the future. But how can we talk about talks with those who conduct indiscriminate strikes on civilians and who try to threaten nuclear power, nuclear energy facilities? So this incursion where uh, a good number of Ukrainian troops, the best they have, went into Kursk is something that, uh, that Putin is saying, okay, look, if anyone thought these people are ready for negotiations, forget about it. We're going to drive them out, as he said. You know, if one last thing he said here was that, you know, if they uh, thought that this would divert attention from the progress that the Russian forces are making, in the Donbass, uh, they have another thought coming. We're having more and more volunteers into the army and uh, the pace of our offensive operations in that area, that is in the Donbass, Donetsk, Lugansk, Zaporozhye, has double, has uh, one and a half times uh, as, as much as before. So, Ray, so I, know you, of, I, Ray, I know you've got your pronunciations all right. And you, you, you speak Russian, right? 
I do. Right? Yeah. What, what were you? Uh, they taught it to you, or how did you learn? You, 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 yeah. well, you were head of the Russian desk at the CIA, right? I was so, the foreign when they were when they were communists. I liked them better when they were communists than now. You know, you could do yep. business with them. What? But but what? Well, all right. So you know how to pronounce all these things. But why are you giving them any credibility? They say their recruitment's up there. They're force people. They throw them in jail. They kill them. They don't do what I can't do that here. We can't even have a draft, right? Pinko Actually, said they, they would they would uh, demolish us. We try to have a draft. All the hawks would become doves if we had a draft. You know. They'd have, their kids would have to go. You know that. Well, that happened in Vietnam, of course. That's one reason we got out. Uh, Mr. President, I think you may be confusing Russia with Ukraine, where this draconian effort to get people, however young or however old, into the army is, is ongoing. The Russians are having no trouble at all recruiting people. Matter of fact, their recruitment stations are full of volunteers. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute, Ray, well, because they use that oil money and they bribe them? I mean, what, what? Well, they, they have a lot of money and they are investing on the, and they're giving these uh, soldiers uh, rather, rather good inducements, bonuses to enter. Um, you know, the, the sanctions haven't worked. The Russian economy is going pretty strong. They have the money and we, we protect that by the end of the year, there may be 800, 900 900,000 troops in Ukraine, and the Ukrainians are losing more troops than they're replacing. So it doesn't really look good for the Ukrainians. The only question that we have right now is how fast Putin will move uh, to conquer the rest of Ukraine, at least eastern Ukraine. And it doesn't look very good because he can, well, I think I've told you this before, he could do that before the election to the extreme embarrassment of NATO, of Ukraine, and of course, the United States. But Ray, 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 uh, I, I get this from you. You're supposed to be the CIA. All right, I assume you're still, your information is solid. But if I read the Atlantic, uh, you know, I know we got some influence there, but you know, Atlantic, or the New York Times even, it never sounds like you sound. You come here and give me these briefings, and uh, what is it? The Guardian, even I was uh, thought a pinko publication. But they they seem to think Ukraine's doing well, you know. And a lot of these, my my briefers, my other briefers on my staff, tell me we put in the, the the new jets, we put in all the new equipment, we're putting all this stuff in, and you keep telling me it's going to hell in a handbasket, and I I keep hearing that it's going better. Now, what's going on here? Well, Mr. President, uh, these uh, organs that you mentioned, and I would add Politico, they tend to listen to people like General Petraeus and other people who have bubbled to the top. There's a lieutenant colonel. His name is Nagel. He's a big professor now at some army institute. And he said, and I quote, well, I don't have the quote here, but he said, you know, um, the, the Ukrainians have begun to win the narrative with their invasion of Russia. Uh, but whether this turns out to be a sensible move uh, remains to be seen. Well, let me explain what happened because this is really interesting. About two weeks ago, the Ukrainians assembled some forces and drove into Kursk Oblast there. Uh, there, there is a Kursk uh, nuclear power station uh, about 30, 40 miles inside the Kursk Oblast. Now, they drove in there and they had very little resistance. And people have been scratching their head. Oh, did they surprise the Russians? Did they surprise the Russians? Or was this some sort of trap where the Russians are going to develop them and get them in a cauldron and kill them all, right? <laughs> well, the answer is simple, Mr. President. The Russians didn't expect them to do that because it's a crazy thing to do. <laughs> They went in there and they, they destroyed some villages and, and did some damage, uh, but they were never going to get to the court's uh, power station. And the Russians have the advantage now. They're going to throw them out. They're already claiming to have killed 1,600 of them and, uh, and destroyed two, 200 uh, tanks and other armored vehicles. So it didn't make any sense. The Russians weren't prepared for it, but that's because they didn't expect anybody to do that, to do something so stupid. 
Now Putin is taking advantage of that and saying, well, look, you know, this is what you get from people who don't not only don't want to talk, but want to do things that will prevent any any reasonable person from talking. Meanwhile, back at the ranch in the Donbass, we have hastened our offensive, our slow offensive by one and a half times. And we're ready to take more territory because the Ukrainians are running out of troops. They shouldn't have put those other troops up there doing that quixotic uh, invasion of Kursk. Uh, and the place, the, the Ukrainians are doing a whole bunch of dumb things. The other thing they've done is to send drones against Zaporozhye. Now that's the largest nuclear power station in Europe, okay? And they hit. They hit the one, they, they hit Zaporozhye this time. This was all yesterday, okay? Now, uh, the Ukrainians said, oh, no, no, the Russians did that themselves. Now, the Russians occupied Zaporozhye nuclear power station uh, four days after they started the invasion of Ukraine, okay? They've had it since then, and all the shelling has come from the Ukrainians, but the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, under the UN, a pretend to not know where the shelling had come from. So Politico says, oh, uh, Zelensky says that the Russians did this. And that's very clear. The IAEA itself put out a tweet saying, no, no, we, we saw these uh, uh, suicide drones and they, they, they made their mark this time. And the Russians are saying, look, the IAEA are you worth anything anymore? Grossi is the name of the fellow who heads it. Are you going to do anything? Are you going to wake up? Uh, are you going to just kind of uh, do something? Make believe? <laughs> That's what she used. The Zaharova. She said, are you going to even make believe you're doing something now? Or are you just going to let this slide? So these are desperate moves. What I'm trying to tell you, Mr. President, is that and then they are not only Hail Mary passes, you know, to try to snatch some victory out of inevitable defeat. They're very dangerous because God knows what else is coming. False flag operations of various kinds could happen before the election. And one way or another, the people who have influence in Kiev need to warn Zelensky against doing something even more stupid, even more inflammatory. All right, so I'm sorry, I, I, I'm a little tired. I dozed off a little bit. Yeah, where, 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 I lost you somewhere. You're telling me what the, these people, political and everything, they don't know what they're talking about. I, I, I you know what? Yeah. There's no happy ending here, right? Uh, I, I mean, that's what you're saying. I've been told every day now that with the new airplanes, the F-16, with the new the missiles, the Russians are running out of ammunition. Uh, with the new stuff, the tide has turned. And and you're telling me this guy, I think, could go kaput even before the election? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, as that? I said before. What's that? Uh, two months away or somewhere? Well, Twitter, slightly, slightly less than Twitter three. Have, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. well, 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 you know, look, I only do these things, I'll tell you, these briefings, because you are so out of joint with what I'm hearing, you know, that either you're, well, you're not a double agent. I know, I've known you for 27 years over there at that CIA, but how could, how could your view be so different than what? You know, foreign affairs, Atlantic, political. Uh, what, what's going on here? These guys, they, they're, they're, they're happy because they're getting all the defense budget up, right? That's right. That, 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 are they all kiss ass to the defense? I know Eisenhower put it, you know, military, industrial complex, blah, blah, blah. We're talking about, what, a thousand lobbyists for you know, money. You're talking money. It's that. That crash and crudeness. So what, why are they back in Kamala now? I mean, where are they? I don't know. What, what they? Oh, same publications. They seem to like her. Think she's okay, or they'll, they'll surely back Trump if he looks like he's winning. But what? What do they think? The Democrats. They, they're they're going to give him. They, 
We, we Democrats give more money, right? And Republicans. Well, that's right. Uh, you know that better than I, Mr. President. But uh, that's that's why I guess they decided that, or you decided together with them, that you needed not to run again. Um, the press is full of stories about major donors, and that would have glowed the military industrial complex. What the hell did, why did these donors abandon me? I gave them all they wanted. I gave the well, defense sentence away. Are you kidding me? Nobody's given more. And then if somebody says it's pro-Israel, who's been more pro-Israel than Joe Biden? Do I have, raised, have I raised a single word? Seriously. How much did we give them just this week? Here, I'm, I'm, Now I'm getting, I'm awake now. Okay, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. You, you're hearing me? I Look am. Look how much money I gave him this week. This Billions. Week. Yeah, mm -hmm. this week. Mm -hmm. right. Son of a bitch, he doesn't blows up some school. Mm -hmm. All right? Or, or was that the Hamas that blew it up and blamed it on Israeli? No, it was the Israelis, Mr. President. They what claimed the it was doing Hamas. They promised me they wouldn't be blowing up schools. Can't they blow up something other than a school? Well, Mr. President, they're trying to uh, make a point here. Uh, we're talking about genocide, okay? Uh, we've been through this before. Uh, they're, they want to uh, don't eliminate... Use the, don't use the genocide word. It, Americans do not do genocide. Now, Barack Obama said that about torture, remember? Uh, the Americans do not do torture. So you got to call it something else. You know what I mean? Well, you know, Barack it's like Obama... you got to be a little bit politically correct here, right, if you're going to be working in government. It's not, and it's a good thing. Politically correct means you know you don't you don't you don't uh, shit we eat you know what I mean you don't mess up your own place all right so you know uh, no I'm getting foul language and everything but god damn it I've been put to the wall here I don't know what's going on anymore but but the fact of the matter is you know uh, we don't do genocide Israel doesn't do genocide uh, you know uh, and uh, you know we're a Judeo Christian ethics we don't do genocide. And uh, all that stuff, you know. Uh, so call it something else. It's a little excessive. Well, what you really okay. want to say, Ray, they're being a little bit excessive because they were killing Hamas people in the school. There's always Hamas people. And man, hell, those guys got elected there. So they, they, you can always get some Hamas people, right? There seems to be a lot of them. The more you kill, well, the more you have. That's what we found in Vietnam. Remember, we're going to eliminate them Viet Cong and God. And you had to. Ted offensive and everything, and the next thing they're all they're all over the place, and they're being cheered when they go into these places and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's just well, uh, you Mr. know, history repeats itself, you know. But it you does. know what? The, what I used to hear the first time is tragedy, the second time is farce. Now, with the nuclear weapons, no, it's even bigger tragedy. It's not farce. Right. It's not fun and games. As you got. Mm -hmm. uh, Never again. Everybody was always saying, never again, never again. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, now it looks like this thing in, in, in Palestine, you know, well, I'm not going to say it's genocide, but, you know, what is it? You know? Well, Mr. President, uh, I, we've not been known to, uh, to be politically correct uh, when we are bound to tell you the honest truth. I'll... I'll I will not use genocide for the rest of this particular session. I'll just use mass starvation, a mass deprivation of medical supplies and epidemics and, and other things to show that maybe 10%, 10% of the population in Gaza no longer is alive, okay? And that the, the uh, Israelis... What? Are... What? 10%? Well, you have a I very thought respect so, I thought it was only 40,000. Well, that's supposed what... to be mostly Hamas people. I didn't know yeah. they had 40,000, right? Well, but isn't that the, the one? And then the Israelis say that's an exaggeration. Yeah. So that's... The 40,000, 40, Mr. President, are the ones whose name tags have been verified after they got out of the rubble and they were dead, okay? Uh, yeah. Hamas uh, was a small sliver of that population. Most of them are still in tunnels, and most you know, of them I did are still see, I did see something. I just was passing a TV, and these people in that what they call a school that was blown up. Was it a school, Ray? Was it a school? It was, and it was. Uh, there were, people have sought refuge there, um, and they, they say thought, they, they say they couldn't find one body, right? Because they were all dismembered. Well, so how do you yeah. get a name tag on a dismembered body? 
That's right. Know, it's so, grotesque. How the yeah. hell did this happen? Israel, we gave them everything. They were the biggest military power. They, everybody says their economy is so successful. The whole Palestinian thing was going to blow away. The Arab government so all loved them. And that was less than a year ago. You know, how the hell did this happen, Ray? What? What Did you guys ever brief me on that? That's what well, did us in. And that goddamn Netanyahu, he went there. He's the one who tried to destroy Obama. Remember, he testified to Congress. Sure. What, what do you think he was doing coming to this Congress? You mm -hmm. know, he was going to wipe me out if I didn't just kiss his ass. You know, that's mm -hmm. what Netanyahu wants. He wants everybody to kiss his ass. And, and, you know, the Israelis, they don't like him. They don't like him, but they back him. Well, what the well, hell is that about? What the hell is that about? You know, they back him. They back him, Mr. President, because he claims to have the full support of the United States government. He does have that. He showed in Congress, uh, and uh, unless uh, well, that was unless, that was a lot of Republicans, right? There was Democrats. Oh, well, a lot show. of Democrats too. Well, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. you know, unless uh, somebody weighs in and says, "Look, um, if." the Iranians retaliate for those assassinations. And if they hit not only Israeli targets, but also U.S. targets, and they are they are accusing the U.S. as, as much as, as the Israelis of being responsible for the assassinations, if they, for instance, kill people in northern Syria, our, our soldiers there, we have about 900 of them, if they kill our soldiers in in Iraq, which has asked us many times to please leave, then you're going to be faced with a really tough situation here as to whether you can be uh, persuaded by Netanyahu to enter the fray with both feet. Now, that would bring a danger. That would be a danger because even if you sent the Marines in, there is no guarantee that the U.S. would prevail, much less the fact that you have another war going on in Ukraine and you have trouble in the South China Sea. China is, is bound to react to all this and stir up some real trouble, not just rhetoric. So you've got a three-front possibility here, at least a two-front possibility, but you have the power still, even as a lame duck, you have the power to rein in the Israeli leaders all you need to say is, if you retaliate big time uh, to whatever Iran does right now and it escalates still farther, you're alone. You, you're on your own. We're not going to give you any more military support. Now, what would that do? That would rein in the, the Israelis and that would prevent a wider war in the Middle East. The only detriment, as I see it, is a political price you would have to pay, and that's not my business. Uh, we're not involved in the domestic policies. I'm saying what will happen abroad if you take advantage of your lame duck status and read the riot act to this person who is, I won't say, I won't say the word, uh, who is responsible for mass starvation, epidemics, polio, worse. And uh, let, has... me give you, let me give you a, 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 a little wisdom here. And you, you have to admit, that's what the CIA never really had much of. You know, I know you got some smart guys like yourself and they learn these languages, but mostly they've made, if you want to look at their record, like Kennedy, old Jack Kennedy, everybody loves now. He said he wanted to blast him into a thousand pieces. He could never be so, okay. What you're missing here is the worse it gets for what Eisenhower was talking about, the military industrial complex, the better it is. Okay? It's like the banking meltdown. The worse it got, the better for the banks. You know, they're too big to fail. We'll make them even bigger, you know? It's like, oh, yeah, now they're going after Google, uh, my own department. You know, go after Google. Lots of luck. You know, break them up. Are you kidding me? You know, the public outcry will be, oh, no, we like it just the way it is. We like it. We like, we like Big Brother if it's for, coming from Google or Apple and everything. So let me give you a little point of, of fact here. That Follow that rule. The worse it gets on the ground. Now, Vietnam was pretty damn bad, you know. Uh, I remember I, I was, you know, around then in the Senate and everything. McNamara said uh, uh, three and a half million 
uh, Vietnamese, mostly civilians died. He admitted that, you know, and we had a draft. If you have a draft and you kill three and a half million and 59,000 Americans died, then the public cares. But if you don't have boots on the ground and you're right, we were vulnerable there. Some boots on the ground, we'll get them out or we'll make a deal somewhere that you don't go after them and whatever. But the American public election is not decided by foreign policy. And, and it's decided by the economy. And these are the people that can make it a good economy or a bad economy, you know? And that's just the reality. And I know I think I'm uh, rambling here. I forgot exactly where I'm going, but you know that I know I'm making sense, right? It's, it's like you said with your fingers, the money. And, and uh, the money gets better. If they kill some American soldiers, there's no limit to the military budget. You kidding me? Who's going to vote against it? Who's going to vote against it? Nobody's going to say, hey, you spent all this money on these airplanes and everything. They're not doing it. On these tanks, they're not doing it. They're going to say, no, we don't care. We don't care. And they're not going to ask tough, big, profound, smart questions about how the hell we got into that. You know, I even see people now, they say Vietnam was a success. It was a winner. A lot of people say that. I don't know. It's just crazy. Well, a lot of people. You know, well, I'm not going to be around. I'm not going to be around much. You may know me. Uh, I, you know, Ray, I know you don't like golf and I don't want to have to play it. So we'll sit somewhere and bullshit with each other and, and straighten it all out. But it won't matter because nobody listened to us anyway. And uh, let me tell you something, Ray. You've been telling me week after week I should shoot myself in the head, let alone the foot, you know, and and uh, and uh, start being a peacenik here and actually control Netanyahu. Uh, are you kidding me? You know what that guy can do now? You know what Trump can do now? That's what Nancy, uh, well, not Nancy, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kamala. Kamala, that's what Kamala. But Nancy, I don't even know what the hell Nancy is. She's the one who caused all this trouble with Taiwan and now I have to deal with it. People in Taiwan think they can go alone and we got to figure that out. And here the damn commies in China, they mattress in the gold in the Olympics. I mean, I don't know what the hell's, don't we have weightlifters? I mean, fencing, is that a communist sport? How the hell did fencing get to be a, you know? I mean, you would know about this. Oh, you don't know about China, you know about Russia. They do fencing in Russia too? They do, yeah. The fencing. I thought the French do fencing. I didn't even know we did fencing. <laughs> the hell, I tried watching the Olympics. It made me sick. What the hell are they doing diving? Didn't we? Used to, when I was in high school, they did diving, diving. When did we stop being the best? We used to be the best. At, that's where Trump, you know, he's going to make a point. Everything's to his advantage. And we were great. We're now we're not great. We can't do fencing. To, you know, to, I mean, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, but you got anything more for me here? What? I mean... Yes, Mr. President. I want to just uh, kind of uh, uh, be a Cassandra here. I, I hope I won't shoot you for being a messenger of bad news. But whatever happens now, and people are on tenterhooks with respect to what Iran is going to do in retaliation for those assassinations, things could easily get out of hand. Now, you have a lot of ships or aircraft carriers and so forth. Uh, those can be helpful in an air defense role. If you think or your advisors say, hey, about let's put those 5,000 Marines on the ground, things are going to get ugly fast. Where, where, are no, they put, where are they putting them? I lost. Well, if you, I you lost, know, the, the, you got I am, I, am a little, I am a little slow, but you know what? I've heard this shit all my life. I've been brief, so I've been so my business on the foreign affairs. I hear all this crap year after year. You know what? I still don't understand this fucking shit because it doesn't make sense. And I'm well, close now. I don't know. Maybe I am. In, uh, maybe I'm getting off my marbles here, but it, it's not fair. It's just not. What did uh, Kamala, she says to the protesters, if, if you keep this up, you're going to elect Trump. Is that what you want? If I ever said that to them, I'd be attacked everywhere. You know, how come she can say that? Don't don't mess around with the Democratic Convention. Don't protest and everything. Just coronate, you know, coronation. Mm. That's what that's what she wants. And, you know, I'm not taking anything away from her. She says nice things about me. I'm not going to put her down. But, you know, I, I don't know. Either. Now, did I write that damn thing, resigning? Did I? Would they wake me up? What was I on some pill? I see Nancy Pelosi now saying she don't 
didn't sound like me. Why wasn't on White House stationery? You know, you the CIA. Did you guys write that? Did you have me resign? I can't even no. remember. I had the goddamn virus, you know. That would be the yeah. FBI. The these president. are not being taped, these conversations, are they? I don't want to be like Nixon no. cursing all the time, you know? No, these are yeah. these are not. Yeah. Well, and you know why they got rid of Nixon? You know why they got rid of Nixon? Because he became a goddamn peace nick. You know that? Nobody ever says anything about that. And then when he was retired, he wrote those books, The Best Way to Have Peace and The Time. He took credit for all his peacenik stuff. Yeah. Goddamn Republicans, they can do that when they want. It's like Trump going off to North Korea. He's going to make you know peace with the worst commie dictator. He can you know, try. People say, oh, nice try. You know, shit, look, look at me. I try to do any of your peacenik kind of stuff, Ray. You know, and, and they're, they're, God, I'll I'm, I'm be finished. That bring that that'll be throw me in jail, just like they'll throw Netanyahu in jail if he gives up the war stuff, right? The Israelis just throw him in jail if he gives up the war stuff, right? Yeah, there's a lot at, at stake for Netanyahu, including his personal uh, fortune. Uh, he may end up in jail if this doesn't turn out right. And so this is just one factor, Mr. President. Maybe we can kind of uh, transition to this uh, in extremis. Uh, and given the correlation of forces now with Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran having thousands, literally thousands of very sophisticated missiles, some of them hypersonic, it's not like it used to be. Israel could lose this one big time, whether you help them out or not. And so what am I saying here? I'm saying that there's a good possibility that if this comes to pass, and it would come to pass within the next few months, Israel has what they call the Samson option, and that is to pull down the temple on themselves and destroy everybody in the area, let less the dream of a Jewish state perish. I have a, a citation here I want to read you because this is not made up stuff. This is a citation from a very prominent Israeli military historian, military advisors. His name is Morton von Krefeld, okay? Now, he, his books are on the same shelf as uh, Sun Tzu. Um, uh, who else? Uh, well, so, some of these really major military <coughs> thinkers, okay? So in, in U.S. libraries, U.S. colonels are, are uh, obliged to read Van Krefeld's works, okay? Now, here's what he says. This we, guy's still he, alive. This guy's alive. Yeah, he's still alive. He's not yeah. even, not even as old as we are, Mr. President. But oh. yeah, he's still. <laughs> we have the capability. Quote: We have the capability to take the world down with us, and I can assure you that that will happen before we let Israel go under. Period. End quote. Now. You may okay. say, you may think that's not rational, but when you look at Netanyahu, what's at stake for him and what's at stake for this vision they have of a Jewish kingdom promised to them by Yahweh? If it all goes to pieces, would they use nuclear weapons? We think there's a better than even chance they will. Conclusion, we've got to do what we can now to tamp down this violence and make sure that everyone survives, including Israel, but also the Palestinian state that we often talk about, but we never do anything to help create. You know, Ray, you say the Jewish state. Most of the Jews I run into, they don't like Netanyahu. I'm talking about, you know, real knowledgeable Jew. I'm not talking about some lefty like Bernie Sanders. I'm talking about Schumer. I'm talking about people like that, you know. Uh, and these protests on these college campuses and everything. It's these Jewish kids criticizing Israel all the time. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Uh, and in Israel, there's these demonstrations all the time. I can't even understand them. But they don't seem to like Netanyahu. They, they want the prisoners back. We're trying to help them. There's something crazy going on, and I, I think, you know, first of all, I don't believe they would blow up the world because, I mean, that's nuts, right, we all say. And uh, that's what we used to call the madman theory. you got to pretend to be 
a madman. So the enemy takes you seriously. But you, 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 this, you know, my mind is working really good now when I'm asking this. All right? This is not any, you know, dementia, you know, crap they throw at me. I've been there. I've been at the hearings. I've been on these issues. I've been there. Senator, Vice President, President, I've been there, okay? And even Reagan, he had to admit, you know, you can't have a nuclear war of any kind that's not going to spiral and kill everything. Certainly not in that region. You can't be using nuclear weapons without the blowback and everything and the madness and all that. But you got to act a little crazy to scare the other people. Now, the other people also have a claim to God, right? And they they say he's going to look out for them too. Everybody's always, you know, looking out for them. You know, I remember when I was trying to be political, you have the Protestants claiming God and you got the Catholics, right? And yeah, how do you negotiate that? Poor Kennedy, you know, they, they drove him crazy, you know. Uh, no, you know, and, and but anyway, I'm, I'm wandering here, I'm wandering here. But I don't get it because we given them and they got, it's like the Six Day War. Everybody, they said, oh, you can't, we're vulnerable, we got to give us more and more. Well, the Six Day War was the Six Day War because they were, the enemy was a paper tiger or whatever. They had nothing. They had nothing. Israel had everything, right? We've That's given right. them, we've given them gazillions since then. We've made them the strongest military power, and certainly in that region, maybe one, and one of the top in the whole world. Why the hell would they need nuclear weapons when they conventionally, and they're showing it, they can kill everybody there with conventional. I mean, I'm not speaking out of turn, and maybe, you know, you say that's what they are about to do, but why the hell do they need nuclear weapons? They just in, in, take over Saudi Arabia, take over Syria, take over, can't they? Without nukes? Well, Mr. President, you're quite right. They have a formidable army uh, helped and armed by us. Unfortunately, for uh, Israel's purposes, uh, Hezbollah, uh, Hamas, uh, more, more particularly Iran, which is just about to retaliate for those assassinations, have equally able armies. They like nuclear e weapons. E equally? Yes, equally. They like nuclear weapons, but they have hypersonic muscles. They have uh, even Hezbollah up in, in southern Lebanon has thousands of missiles that they can rain down on Israeli cities, for God's sake, as well as U.S. installations in yeah, Iraq. But Israel with that Iron Dome and everything, they knock them all down. Well, the Iron Dome is a pretty sophisticated thing, but it's not, it's, it's not impenetrable. Uh, people, missiles get through, and, and the I Iranians... I reading these reports. They knocked down uh, all of them. Yeah, the Iranians gave us, uh, on, in April, the Iranians gave us a uh, couple, couple of days to get ready, and then they sent in a wave of uh, drones, and most of those got shot down by very sophisticated missiles. Then they sent in some cruise missiles, slow, slow. But then most of those got by other missiles. And, and then all of a sudden, some missile, real missiles came in fast. Not the hypersonic, but sophisticated missiles. And they destroyed an airfield or two and got through their Iron Dome system. Now, how many air defense missiles the Israelis have left after that episode is anybody's guess. I suppose some people know. But whether they can defend against a... Un, an unannounced, unprepared for uh, assault by Iran in retaliation for what the Israelis did to these uh, two Hamas, Hamas and Hezbollah leaders, that remains to be seen. What I'm trying to say here is that the correlation of forces has changed, has changed since, uh, well, since uh, the Six Day War and you know, I, I, you probably remember, Mr. President, that after the Six-Day War, Menachem Begin, the former prime minister of Israel, admitted that the, there was no threat from Egypt. They were not. They were not threatening. We decided to attack uh, to attack Egypt, and we got lots of land in return. So we need to be honest with that. He said that to the uh, Armed Forces College in in Washington, 1982. So 
The Israelis have occupied all these territories, including the Golan Heights, including Gaza, okay? Including the West Bank. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get this straight, what you just said. Right? Mm -hmm. And you you, you present it as if it's fact, Mm -hmm. right? Not fake news, fact, right? Correct. Uh Now, because a lot of people are confused. I mean, I don't know. But you're saying that they control the West Bank and the Golan Heights and Gaza. They control all that. Which was controlled by Egypt had the West Bank, right? Jordan was in Gaza and Mm -hmm. Syria was in the Gaza. And you're saying the Six-Day War is heroic victory, right? And it was, what, 67, right? Was that? Uh, June, June 67. That, yeah. No, yeah, 67, yeah. 67, I got that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're saying that Israel was not attacked? If they That's weren't correct, attacked, Mr. if they weren't attacked, then what right did they have to grab this land and in fact, it wasn't even the Egyptians or Jordan. They're supposed to be Palestinians, according to that UN agreement. It's a point I've never, you know, even though I'm the president, I was on the foreign relations kind of thing, I never quite understood that one. You well, know, Mr. President, just to, just to refresh your memory, um, what Menachem Begin said in 1982, it was a speech in Washington. He explained the events in 1967. He said, look, uh, the Egyptian forces coming up in the Sinai, they posed no threat to us at all. We decided on our own initiative to attack Egypt and enlarge our, our, our folk. Now, that was 1967, June. In November, the UN, uh, UN Security Council passed Resolution 242. It was the 22nd of November, 1967. And that demanded that Israel withdraw from occupied territories. No, they why never did. Why, did we, why didn't we veto it? Well, because we could see that it was a war of aggression. It was unprovoked, and Menachem Begin said so later. Okay, who, who was well, our president? Then? Who was that? Uh, uh, well, LB Johnson. LBJ was the president in '67, uh, and in '82 it was Reagan. But uh, the, what Begin said is very little quoted, although there was contained in the New York Times at the time. What I'm saying here is that lots of things happened in 67, including the killing of 32 U.S. sailors deliberately by Israel fighter bombers and Israel torpedo boats. They were part of the USS Liberty right off the, in international waters right across from the Sinai. Why do I mention that? Uh, because false flag attacks on U.S. troops is very possible right now. We have troops all over the place in the Middle East. All Israel needs to do to stage a false flag attack is to pick any one of any one of several places, Iraq, Syria, all these bases we have in the area, kill some Americans and get you in a corner, get uh, you and your advisors in a corner where you think you have to uh, you have to respond, so to speak, and so the the battle goes down, and you're 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 confronted with not only Middle East, you're not you're confronted with with uh, uh, Ukraine. You got the Chinese out. You know, I remember when you were on uh, what sixty minutes, and and you were asked, um, well, don't you think that maybe Ukraine and uh, in the Middle East, maybe two fronts, that would be a little little too much. And I remember very well, you would remember it yourself, uh, Mr. President, you said, we're the United States of America. Huh? We're the most powerful country in the history of the world. In the history of the world. Ray, now, Ray, Ray, are you mocking me and mocking this country? No, no, I'm just quoting you. You said that no, in those I don't those like terms. The, the little theatrics there, you know. Okay, all right. Well, I got I'll enough say, people putting me down these days. You know, I, I mean, okay. don't don't try my patience here. I yeah, I'll see you again, all right? Let's just be clear about yeah. that. I'm not in a We're good trying. mood. Yeah. I'm not in a good mood for, you know, yeah. people making jokes at my expense, you know. Well, yeah. I would, I'm sorry, but that, that's the way you came across. The, the thing I'm trying to say, Mr. President, is that used to be the case, like after World War II, after the Soviet Union imploded. 
but it ain't the case anymore. We can't fight a two-front war. We couldn't fight a one-front one, uh, war, given what has happened to our military, with a surface of four-star generals and people who are not really trained at the bottom because a lot of the light colonels, a lot of the majors have quit out of disgust. All right. I think that uh, takes the cake for depressing <laughs> briefings, you know. Uh, uh, I can I, tell you me, a little bit. Let me ask you something. They got some hawkish guy briefing Kamala? Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. God damn, I can, can't forget somebody's name. Kamala. You know, uh, they, 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 they got somebody telling us, I mean, what are they going to do with that woman? She, someday she's going to have to speak. Trump's going to ask her, would you, would you back Israel? Are you back in Israel? How far are you back in Israel? And why did, why did Biden, why did he, you know, pull the rug out from under Israel, right? And she going to betray me? And then she's going to lose her own people? What? Mr. President, what I can... Case. Yeah. Well, what yeah, I can uh, assure you, what I can assure you is that uh, we briefers, my colleague who briefs uh, the vice president, speak from the same script: the president's daily brief, the president's weekly summary. So she's getting the same information. So what she does with it is beyond our ken and beyond our influence. But our our job is to be apolitical and to be what not so uh, politically correct and just tell it like it is. Now, I, I agree this was a pretty depressing briefing today, but let, let me, would you like to, me to finish with a joke? Well, yeah, you know, you're, you're a good guy, Ray. I'm not putting you down. I mean, I get, look, I'm pissed off at the whole goddamn okay. everything. You know, I did, I, I've been a great president, haven't I, Ray? I mean, a great president, no? I mean, you no. know, I, I don't know. I, I don't get it, and, you know, uh, Jesus, when you think of these other presidents, how screwed up they were. And I mean, I don't know. It's it's all, what's that, social media stuff and all this crap that's out there with this internet. Boy, this internet turned out to be a shithole, didn't it? Yeah. Well, didn't it? Mr. President. It's a shithole. You know, everybody has information. Everybody gets information. You, you can't keep secrets anymore. Well, God damn, you have to keep secrets, right? You know that, Ray. You, you, got, you guys have to... Those, how many of them? Half or two thirds? Probably a secret to even say it. Or who are doing the overthrowing of the governments and making the wars? They don't tell you what's going on, right? Let's it's be right. honest about it, right? You've been mm -hmm. in the dark twenty-seven years at the CIA. They've been lying to you. Well, well you think they tell me the truth? And here's they well, sent you over here to brief me. What? That's like what they're you? not listening to you. Why should I? What you need, Mr. President, and it's a little late to tell you this, but you need a CIA director, CIA director who is devoted to telling you the truth unvarnished. When did, uh, that, and, when did that ever happen, Ray? Who was it? Well, I served, I under, served under Bill under Bill Colby directly. I was his national intelligence officer for Western Europe. Okay, now. When the operational part of the agency came up with a cockamamie scheme to overthrow the government in Italy or Portugal because they were becoming socialist or communists, Colby, to his credit, would come to us, come to me and say, we got rumors here that they're preparing this little task force to do this. Uh, that is outside the agency because they know I wouldn't buy into it. What do you think, Ray? I said, that's crazy. That would never work. Okay, write it up and take it down and tell Kissinger. <laughs> I did, okay? Now, what year, what, maybe, year was, what year was that? Uh, this was uh, 75, 76. So lots of stuff like that happened, but uh, very few directors, the only one I know of, and I served under seven, uh, the only one I know of was Bill Colby, who tried to rein in the operations people by giving us a little, a little uh, in on what was planned. Now, from the beginning, you mentioned that John Kennedy wanted to split the CIA, scatter it to the winds with a thousand pieces. Well, why do you want to do that? 
because the CIA told him, Alan Dulles told him, that if they they land on the Bay of Pigs, there's going to be an insurrection. They hate Fidel Castro. They'll throw him out, and the communists will be gone for the Western Hemisphere. That's what they told him. Now, Pope, uh, uh, John Kennedy had the presence of mind to ask a very eminent historian to look into the record. And Arthur Schlesinger, who was working on contract at the time, told, told John Kennedy at the, as a result of this research he did that the operations people that was, were being directed by, by Alan Dulles never checked with the analysts in the analyst division to see if it were true that there was great discontent in Cuba and that the Cubans would rise and overthrow Castro. As a matter of fact, there were papers that the analysts had written saying this is never going to happen. He's very, very popular. You know, if they knew there's going to be a landing on the beach, they would have poured, reported this is crazy. It's not going to work. So that's why JFK wanted to split the CIA into a thousand pieces. And what I'm saying here is that so long as the operations people are not obliged to get some sort of reasonable take on what's likely to happen as a result of this or that operation, Bangladesh maybe, you know, then the CIA is really a bifurcated thing where the president can use it for whatever purse he wants. If he doesn't want a chap from the analysts, it's okay. That's what Alan Dulles did. That's what, uh, what Bill Colby tried not to do. And I can attest to that because I was one-on-one -on -one with Bill Colby. He had a lot of guts. He revealed the family jewels, as you'll remember, before the church committee in 1975, okay? What happened to Bill Colby? Uh, he died in a very, very curious canoe accident, which was never investigated properly. I can give you chapter and verse. I was out of the country at the time. <laughs> It was my fault, but I give you a chapter and verse on the, the little bit of investigation was done by an independent source. I believe that uh, Bill Colby was guilty of revealing the family jewels and suffered the same fate as John F. Kennedy before him. You know, I'm still the president of the United States, right? I you are. Can't, and you just told me that Kennedy was killed by our people? You don't mean that. You you can't tell me that. You you, you well, Mr. President, you, you, you can you just can. look I'm just warning you. I'm I'm for your own good. You're an old we're old coots here. We're old guys. I'm just telling you. It's more if it ever were true, it's more than the American people can handle. You know? Well it's more than they maybe they can handle that you bumped off the head of the CIA because he became a peacenik like you. That could happen. But that, that you really believe Kennedy was killed because he, the Bay of Pigs, and didn't want to continue doing that? Well, Ray McGovern, I'm, I'm putting you on a spot here. You well, really, the, or, you, or you can backtrack. You can take a back. It's okay. We could, end, <laughs> we could end here. I don't want to get you in trouble. You know, uh, I, I understand. Mr. Maybe. President, uh, this book here, uh, JFK and the Unspeakable, uh, is what you really, really need to read sometime when you go into the beach in Rehoboth. Um, it has chapter and verse. Suffice it to say that... Uh, Who wrote uh, that book? Who wrote that? Uh, James Douglas, Douglas with two S's. Uh, uh, it was just about 15 years old now. Most people who know about the, the, the JFK assassination consider this the Bible now. It draws on all kinds of other other information. Now, it, it, wait, wait, you, you're sounding like Oliver Stone, um, Oliver Stone movie or something. Is that well? Is that... Oliver was not far off, but this is much much re oh, more recent. Uh, oh, but what okay. I was trying to say here is that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Donald Trump, one of your predecessors, uh, knew that the legislation uh, from Congress, the law required him to release the rest of the CIA and FBI documents having to do with the JFK assassination. Okay? It was a date certain. Okay? 
uh, Trump got up in the morning and he said, I'm going to release the rest of those documents as required by congressional law today. What happened? He got up in the afternoon and said, and I quote, I've talked to the CIA and to the FBI, and they say I can't really do that just now, and so we're going to defer the his decision on this for six months. McGovern makes a little note in his calendar. Check, check on this in six months. What happened in six months? Nothing. On his way out, President Trump talked to uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano. And Napolitano said, uh, Mr. President, you made a promise when you came in to me personally that you would release those documents having to do with the JFK assassination. I said, Judge, what did he say? Well, he said, I can't possibly do that, uh, Ray. He can't possibly do that, Judge Napolitano. That's so terrible. My God, I, if you saw, quote, if you saw, if you read these things like I have read them, you would know why I could never, never release them. Now, Mr. President, you're president now. You're still president. You're still president for five plus months. Read them. See if you have, see, see where your duty lies to protect the Constitution of the United States, to make sure that you and the White House are running things and not some rogue agency empowered by law to do other things and really kind of unrestrained things because no one exercises proper oversight. You know, Ray, I'm going to give you some advice. I'm sure you know this because you were in the CIA and, you know, so long, you've been so long. But I remember not going to tell you who told me this, but when I started getting serious in politics, I heard too good to check. You know, we got an idea of how Kennedy died that's consistent with American stability, American greatness, American democracy, which we're promoting throughout the world. And the idea that maybe our own secret agency or some other has something to do with this dramatic change in America. You go back and you open that, you open that, you open everything. And you lose. Everybody thinks it's the dollar that makes us strong. It's strong, the dollar, the American dollar. That's an important part of our prosperity. I won't kid you about that. But it's our, it's our, carrying hope, hope, that we have the secret source for democracy. We know freedom. We have lived freedom. Yeah, we had slavery. Yeah, we had segregation. Yeah, we had some not so good wars. But the secret source of our power, our success, is we hold keys to the democracy kingdom. Okay, well, you can't call it a kingdom. But we, we are that. And I'm giving you a little bit of advice. You're getting dangerously close to challenging that. That's like challenging the, the, the Old Testament, which you did a little bit today. You know, that's, you can't go there. Let's just end this now. It's getting a little unnerving, even though me, and I don't think they'll come after me after I'm in office, but who knows? You know, who knows? Who knows? It's kind of creepy. It's creepy. I'll give you that. It's creepy. And you worked right next door in that same building with all those creeps that messed up history, including that Bay of Pig, everything. They messed up history so much. It's amazing how those guys can tell. They go on TV after and they sound like they got everything figured out and they made the whole mess. It's unbelievable, you know. They're well, Mr. President, there's a law, uh, the National Security Act 1947, and it authorizes you to use the CIA uh, in, in any way you would like to do that, uh, consistent with uh, the purposes that you have in mind. In other words, it gives you a personal control of a Gestapo 
let's say the word pure and simple. Now, some presidents have used that in that way. You know, other presidents have, have overthrown governments, uh, whether it's Chile, whether it's war in, in Iraq or war in, in Vietnam. So what I'm saying, Mr. President, is that you're you're the guy that the uh, what does it say? That you left out you left out Iran, which is what we were talking about before. It yeah. was that Kermit Roosevelt was that CIA. They, they went yeah, in they, and, and they only did it because the British Secret Service wanted to do it because that guy Mossadegh, the last so-called Democrat they had there, the last secular person, he was going to nationalize the oil. This whole mess we got right now. You tell me we could lead to nuclear war. All goes back to the CIA overthrowing this guy Mossadegh. What was that? Nineteen fifty-three or something. Mossadegh, so right? Mossadegh. Yeah. What did I right. say? Did no, I not say Mossadegh? No. Well, no. I, I had another slip. Well, why well, focus no, no. on? Why focus on the slip? You know, I know what I'm talking about. Of we, course. We, yeah. We we threw that guy out, you know, and then we brought that Shaw in. He was supposed to be a Democrat match. The guy. Can, can, defines himself as a Shah of Shahs, leader of leaders, and we say he's the, now the democratic alternative. And then we get the Ayatollah. We even look twice, you know, maybe it's not worse. Maybe, yeah, well, all right. You know, remember at the end, we, you guys didn't even like the Shah. You're starting to give him a hard time because he had spent all his money on all this war stuff and everything. He didn't have him. We, we, you know, we had to raise the price of oil. We didn't like him at the end. So we got the Ayatollah. I don't know. All the whole thing sucks. Now, I think the bottom line there, Mr. President, is why the Iranians don't like us? <laughs> well, because they had one democratically elected leader in four millennia. Okay. His name was Mossadegh. And he said, you know, hey, this oil we have under our, our ground here, uh, maybe we should have a bigger share of the profits from that. And he decided, as you have just said, to nationalize some of that oil. And the British took Alan Dulles by the shoulder and said, now, look, you're a young CIA. This is what you do when an upstart like Mossadegh starts to fall with oil belonging to British Petroleum. OK, took them about a year. They overthrew. And the shock came in with brutality not seen since Hitler's regime in the 40s. So, why do the Iranians not like us? Why? Why wonder? Well, you know, whether that's the history. Okay, why did they raid the U.S. embassy? Because they were afraid it was going to happen again when Khomeini came in. So, there are reasons for this. Uh, American people don't know these things. They need to know them. And you, you can use your bully puppet these next these next few oh, months. Oh, stop it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not committing suicide. I got, I got, I'm having another, enough trouble, enough trouble. I, I can't tell you, Ray. I have enough trouble waking up in the morning. I have enough trouble. Get, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in a shithole here. And I'm not even sure how the hell it happened. If you believe Nancy Pelosi, maybe I didn't even sign the goddamn thing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. You know, like they told me to party and, they told me, you know, I don't want Trump. Trump will throw me in a slammer someday. You know, he's angry with me because we try to throw him in a slammer. You know, he's going to, you think, it's, well, that was stupid. I didn't even know we should do that. Why are we bringing all these felony charges against him? The guy, you know, my God, you know, the ex-president, you're supposed to treat him with some respect, right? Because you're going to be an ex, I'm going to be an ex-president, right? Do I want somebody coming after me? With all these felony charges, I took the, it's got some papers in my garage. I got this, I dad, dad. I mean, who the hell knows what they find? And my son, man, Hunter, he's, he's, he's toast. These guys win. I mean, they're, they're vindictive, but are they any more vindictive than we were? No, I don't know. I don't know. We've been, you know, Jesus Christ. It's I well, enough, enough. I mean, I don't even know what's going on anymore. And uh, I hope you're, 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 other guy there is telling Kamala something. She's not a bad person, you know, but she just doesn't know a lot of this. And she's naive, you know. I don't know why I say that, but, you know, she actually thinks you can, you know, be play footsie with Netanyahu. One thing I learned, that guy will do you in. That guy, he, he Obama, Obama hates him. Ooh, Obama hates him. Guy came to Congress and attacked the sitting president. Huh? He hates him, right? You know that, no? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Till next week, there or whenever I see you again. I don't know if I'm still alive. Whatever. Uh, you know, hang in there, Ray. You know, you're you're a good guy. And the, the whole thing is, you know something. It gets in the way all the time. Every time I get briefed by somebody who knows something, it gets me all confused. The story of my life. It's better not to know too much. You ever think about that? You know, and better not to know too much. Yeah. Yeah. All well, right. I appreciate all right. I appreciate your willingness to listen, Mr. President, even for things that are strange and uh, at, yeah. at great just tell me, Just tell me, Ray, tip me off when they're coming for me. All right? I don't want that. You know, yeah. remember Jam in there in Saigon when you guys did him in? They knew, nobody tipped him off. The guy was scurrying through the sewers of Saigon. Trying to save Jim. his ass, Jim. Yeah. Jim, no, didn't Jim? I remember. Yeah, not, I got a memory. Even, I'm not losing it all, Ray. I'm not losing it all. They make this shit up. It's too much to remember anyway. What good is it? Remember, you know everything about some country. Then you guys overthrow. Where there went the whole knowledge. Did you guys kill the Mumba in Africa? Help screw up Africa? Well, no. When you yeah. say you guys, all I know is that JFK was was really astonished and suspected the worst and probably was able to find out the worst about what happened to Lumumba. I believe uh, what you're suggesting is what happened. Yeah, and so he's we, not we, could go, we, we could go on forever here. Yeah, but that guy, he, he looked like he had a shot to be a you know courageous guy there in Africa. What we did sure. to fuck up Africa, I can't, I'm cursing again. I don't want... Get that kid that cut this out in the tapes, you know? That's what got Nixon in trouble. He kept cursing all the time and putting down everybody in his tapes, you know? He he wasn't always like that. He met with all these people. All right, Ray. See you next, whatever, if I have to. Yeah, okay. Uh, Thanks for listening. uh, Maybe we should make these things even earlier. I got to go take a nap now. I got them. It's a hell of a thing. You know, I don't know how you hold up that well, but I just... uh, you know, ah, shit. Uh, you know what Thank somebody you, says, says that old age is not for sissies. You know, god damn it. Now, you know, these other people, they're not spring chickens either. That Kamala, she looks good, but, you know, what is she, 60 or something now? I mean, God, I don't know. That's not, used to be considered old, now it's considered young. What do I know? All right, you got all your marbles, Ray. I got to admit, you know, sometimes I doubt myself, but you got them. Uh, you know, maybe you know too much. Knowledge gets in the way, Ray. I've seen that. Knowledge gets, you know, stuff, the whole mythology, Ray. Yeah, the more mythology collapses there. Yeah. All right. Take care. Yeah. Thank you. Right.